Um, All right, so let's kind of build off of what we previously went through. Okay, you guys just took a quiz over uh, linear programming and making the optimal decision from a large set of choices, right? Uh, systems of three equations for three unknowns, all of that built up to that. Now what we're going to do is we are going to try and take a whole slew of data points now and try and find some way of making predictions. Okay? The National Weather Service does this all the time, especially now with all the hurricanes that have been going on and everything. Okay? They use what they call a regression model to predict uh, when it'll hit in certain areas based on current information. Now, obviously, that is always changing and everything, and it's not exactly like what we're going to be doing because there's a lot more elements to that than, than what we're going to be dealing with. Okay, they got a lot of models. They got a lot of statistical software that can make those predictions. We're going to do something a lot easier, but we're going to do it by hand. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to take a whole bunch of data points okay, on a graph here. And we're going to try and find a way of making a prediction, say, that when x is equal to 14, all right, what my y value will be. Now, that depends on the other data points and what we call the trend of data. Okay, we're going to try and find some relationship between the two variables, our x and y, and try and find a model that we can make predictions off of, right? And that's a method called regression. Okay? It's a process called regression. And that's what we're going to be really building up to is what we call linear regression. And all regression is is the process of identifying a relationship between two variables. Okay? Putting it in terms of some model. Or like we're going to be doing it, putting it in terms of a linear equation. And we're going to be dealing with linear regression. Okay? Before it was linear programming, now it's linear regression. When that relationship between uh, our takes the form of a line, we call it linear regression. Okay? So that's what we're focusing on here. Now, this is the very beginning parts of linear regression. We're going to get to applications where you're going to use Desmos to do the more difficult parts, kind of like we did with linear programming. And then we'll do the interpreting. But first, I want to make sure we're able to do this and find the regression line by hand. Okay, now obviously we can't have very large numbers to do this, so we're going to be doing some, some uh, smaller numbers and more structured examples to go through this. So these linear regression models or equations can be used to make a logical prediction. Now, based on this data set right here, if I said x is equal to 14, where do you think a point would fall? Would it be over here? Would it be over here? Would, a y, would I have a y value over here? What would I have if x is equal to 14? Well, logically, it would fall in this area somewhere, right? Because the trend of data is going in that direction. So that would be the logical prediction. But what is that prediction? And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be trying to do that so that we segue into the applications and can make the prediction when a, a hurricane, given its linear path, might hit landfall, right? We can do that type of stuff. So now let's take a look at these uh, set of data points and see if we can find some relationship between our x's and our y's and see if we can come up with some way of making a logical prediction for it, okay? Now, obviously we're talking about linear regression and uh, what we're going to be talking about specifically here is the beginning parts of linear regression or line of best fit. So we're obviously going to try and find some line that can best represent the relationship between x and y so we can use that line to predict. So if this is number one on your worksheet, the easiest thing to do is just go right into the first problem. Right? I have all this data set right here. And the first thing you need to do when you're trying to find the line of best fit so we can make our regression line is to determine your trend of data. Take a look at this data. Again, trend means where are we trending to, right? You know, you have all this data and trending topics and all that stuff on Yahoo or whatever. I don't know. I don't deal with that stuff much, but all right. Where is this trending? What, are, what type of pattern are we going in? And think of it as a linear equation. What type of pattern are we going in? Somebody said it. 
negative, a negative sloping trend, right? So we are going to obviously continue that negative sloping trend. Because otherwise, if we say, okay, well, my prediction is going to be up here, that doesn't follow suit with the trend. So the first thing we have to do is determine some type of trend of data. My data is trending in a negative fashion, all right? Now, that means my line of best fit or my linear regression equation is going to be what? A negative sloping line, right? That's the logical answer to that. So we got to try to find some line that best models this data or the trend of this data. So where would my line, where ideally would I want my line to show the best relationship between these two, between all, right? Right down the middle. Now, will it ever, will it be perfect in all the scenarios? No, it won't. But my goal is to find a line here that best fits this data. And then I create an equation for it and then use it to predict. All right? So now... Based on this line, we got to find the points are closest to it, okay? And what I did with these, these are all handmade, okay? So they specifically work uh, to having an equal number above and below. Because a line of best fit would mean that we have an equal number above and below, right? If I have this here, instead of this one I just drew right here, which we'll work on here in a second, would this be a good representation of the data? Why not? It is negative trending, right? But what does it have? It has three data points above and a ton below. So it really isn't going to give me a good logical prediction here at 14 of what I would have, right? I can't make a logical prediction. So it needs to be right down the middle, and it needs to have an equal number above and below, or as close to that as possible. Okay, we'll talk about strength of a relationship of the regression line when we get to the applications and we deal with correlation coefficient, the strength of a relationship between the two variables. But for now, we just want to find this line. So the way I created all these problems is there will be four points above and four points below and three on the line. You need to find the line of best fit that contains three points and has four above and four below. Does that make sense? So if I draw, and again, the way you want to type these problems is to draw your tunnel. First thing is so that you know the trend of data. Then draw a line that splits that directly in half. Now we want to try to find some points that are close. What are the three closest points to this dotted line right here? We have this one, this one, and this one. Correct? Now, do those three form a line? How would we determine if that is, in fact, a line there? What would we need to do? A line has what? Consistent slope throughout, right? So any point on it going from one point to another has to have the same slope from that point to another point, correct? So let's ask ourselves this. Going from here to here, what is the slope? Because that, if this is a true line, because not... First of all, we have to have an equal number above and below, but we actually have to have a line, right, that connects three points. So if we have three points that have different slopes in between, that's not a line. We need to find the line of best fit. So we need to check the slope. What is the slope between this point and that point? Again, I want you to graph it, okay? So you should, hopefully, some of you need some graph paper. Then, okay, you will need tons of graph paper for this. But for those that already have it graphed, what is the slope between those two points? Down one and over what? Down one and over one, so it's negative one, right? What is the slope between this second point and this third point right there that we believe to be on this line? What is the slope there? Down what? Four, right. Down four, right four. So my slope reduced would be what? Negative one. Negative one. What was the slope right here? Negative one. What was the slope between those two points? Negative one. We have found a line, right? Now, is there an equal number above and below? 
There's four above, four below, three on my line. I've just found my line of best fit. All of these will work out nicely. Okay, there may be a couple answers to each one of these. There could be a different couple options. And when we get into the applications, then we'll be able to measure the strength of those options. But right now, we're not measuring that strength. So we have a line of best fit that connects these three points right here. Now, what we need to do to make predictions is to create the regression line. Each line is in what form? A linear equation is what form? Y equals mx plus b, right? So we need to create the y equals mx plus b version of that line of best fit. We know the slope already, right? We want to get into y equals mx plus b. We already know the slope, which is what? m is equal to negative 1. So my equation right up to this point is y is equal to negative 1x plus, well, I'm not quite sure yet, right? So how would we determine the y-intercept now of this line? What could I do? Plug in x for 0. What? Plug in x for, or 0 for x. Well, if I plug in 0 for x, I don't know my y-intercept, though, so I can't find what y would be. I can't just plug 0 in. You plug 0 in to find the y-intercept if it's already in y equals mx plus b, right? But I don't know what my b is, so I have too many unknowns if I plug in 0 for 1. What could I do? Does this ex keep extending? What could I extend? I could just keep my slope going until I do what? Hit my y-axis, right? Go up 1, over to the left 1, up 1, over to the left 1, up 1, over to the left 1, until I do what? Until I hit my y-intercept, right? We know the y-intercept is going to be up here somewhere. So somebody continue that slope and tell me where my y-intercept is. 13. If you continue that all the way up, it will cross over here at 13. So my y-intercept or my b is 13. So my regression equation, the equation I'm going to use to make predictions, is y is equal to negative 1x plus 13. That is my regression line. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, what we can do with this is now make predictions, right? So on this sheet, I've given you some coordinate points with half of the coordinate point gone because you're going to make predictions on these now. So we are going to say, okay, what is the logical prediction when x is 1? What will the y value be? Okay? We're going to look and try to find out when x is 12, what will y be? We are going to try to find out when y is 6, what will x be? Based on this regression line, the linear regression line, or line of best fit, okay? we're going to try and make these predictions. Now, how in the world do you think I'm going to make those predictions now that I have a y equals mx plus b equation? Just plug it in, right? It becomes simple at that point. So now you've got to take, if I got x is equal to 1, I plug 1 in for x and find out what y is, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Here is my regression line. I boxed it in so we always know that. Show all your work. We have y is equal to negative 1 times 1 plus 13 which means y is going to be equal to positive 12. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, plus 13 is 12. So my logical prediction here would be that if x is 1, my y value is 12. It's a prediction. It doesn't mean it's going to be that exact number. It's just a prediction so that we can figure out, okay, where in the world will this even happen? Okay, whereabouts will it occur? So now we plug in 12, y is equal to negative 1 times 12 plus 13. We got y is equal to negative 12 plus 13, which is equal to what? 1. So if x is equal, or x is equal to 12, the logical prediction would be y would equal 1, correct? And then what do we do if y is equal to 6? Where are we going to plug that value in? For the y, now it's going to be slightly different. It's going to be 6 is equal to negative 1x plus 13. So we now have to solve for x by subtracting 13. What is 
6 minus 13. Negative 7, divide by negative 1, and we get what? x is equal to 7. So 7 would be a logical prediction. And you can check this by plotting those points, and it should follow the trend of data. And then now we could plug in 12, and we get negative 12 is equal to negative 1 x plus 13. Subtract 13. We get negative 1 is equal to negative 1 x, divide by negative 1 x is equal to 1, which would make sense because what was my first point to begin with? 1, 12, they match up, so my numbers are right. I made a mistake somewhere here. So those would be my predict predicted values, or predicted coordinate points, right? Given this trend of data, given this linear regression model, those would be my predictions. Does that make sense? That's all you're doing here. You're trying to practice making predictions based off of a, determining the relationship between our x's and y's in this specific data set. Okay? But try one more. Because we're done here at what, 11? Try one more. Number two. You don't have homework on this. I just wanted to go over this so that Tuesday or Monday we can come right back and go right at it. All right? Now, I've already graphed number two here for you. Take a minute to graph it. I think this has had it. It's all chewed up. So take a minute to graph this. Once you're done graphing it, we'll take a look here and try and find our regression line or line of best fit. So we can make predictions on the coordinate points or the partial coordinate points that we're given on this problem. Now, when you are done with it, it should look something similar to the what's up here, right? Now, you'll catch up as I'm going along anyways, because I'll be talking in between. So now, what is the trend of data? What am I looking at? Is this a positive trend, a negative trend? Is it tough to tell the trend? What's the trend of data here? It is a positive trend. And we're looking at something to the effect of this. So make your tunnel so that we can determine. You want to try to get it as close to these points and mimicking or modeling the, the trend that is going on with this data. You want to try to get that tunnel as close as you can. The tunnel, believe it or not, I know it seems kind of stupid to do, but actually kind of helps you find the trend and then be able to split that trend right in half. That's why we're trying to do it. Now, my goal will be to get a line that splits this. Now, we have an awful lot of points close to that line, right? So now we're going to have to pick a few, pick three of them. Because remember, three of them are going to be on a line. I made it so that three are on the line, four above, four below. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. Well, we got this point that's fairly close, this one, this one, this one, and that one. Correct? So let's pick some here. Let's see what we're working with. Let's pick this point right here. Let's pick this point right here and that point right there. I'm not saying that that's going to be your line of best fit but at least it's a start. If it's not your line of best fit, meaning the slope is not the same between all the, between these three points, then pick the, another three and see if you can find that line of best fit. Now, what is the slope between this point and this point right here? What's the slope? Up three over one. So from here to here, I go up three, over one. What about from here to here? What is it? Up three over one. Up three over one. Wow, that was great. Maybe we found it right away. Now the only question from here is, how many do I have above and how many do I have below this line? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hey, it worked out perfectly. If you draw your tunnel, and you try to split it directly in half because that would be ideal situation. 
and you pick the points closest to it, generally speaking, you'll find it fairly quickly. Now, will that always occur? No, it won't always occur. But in this case, it did. So what is my equation going to be now? I know I have a slope of what? 3 over 1. I could figure my y-intercept out by continuing the slope until I, of the line until I hit my y-intercept, my y-axis. So my equation is going to be y is equal to 3x plus or minus, depending on where the y-intercept is. What is it going to be? Minus 6. Minus 6. So my linear regression is going to be down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right here is my y-intercept of the model or the line of best fit. So now we can use this as a predictor. We can use it as a predictor to predict these coordinate points that I've given you, or the half of coordinate points that I've given you. So in this particular problem, I've given you 8 for the first one, 10 here, 9 here, and 12 here. So now, we plug it in and then make our logical predictions. Now that we know what our regression line is, or our line of best fit. So now we plug in 8 for x, we get y is equal to 3 times 8 minus 6. y is equal to 24 minus 6. And what do we end up getting? Well, 24 minus 6 is 18. So 8 comma 18 would be my logical prediction. Now we plug in 10. y is equal to 3 times 10 minus 6. y is equal to 30 minus 6. y is equal to what? Again, that's getting further out. If I kept doing my line and everything, that would take a little bit to find that prediction, right? So we just plug it into the equation, and then we're golden. We can find the logical y value. Now we go to the next one. We have 9 is equal to 3x minus 6. Add 6 to each side. We get 15 is equal to 3x and divide by 3. x is equal to 5. So 5 would be my logical prediction. Okay? And then we do the last one. 12 is equal to 3x minus 6. Add 6 to each side. 18 is equal to 3x. I know I'm going fast because we have about one minute and five seconds. Okay? So then I get 6. So it's 6 comma 12. That's all you're doing for these. Now, you don't have homework, okay? But I wanted to get through this and introduce it so that on uh, Monday we can get right into the thick things, okay? We'll spend a couple days on this. We'll then move on to the applications of this and really do some analysis of these different situations, all right? Hopefully you enjoy your weekend. Good luck to the football team. Go beat them up. <laughs>